Welcome to the fight. Stringer beads versus weave beads. Why? What's the difference? Well, first we need to tell you what's a stringer bead and what is a weave bead. So what I have right here are stringer beads. If you notice, this is a whole bunch of separate weld beads that are lapped up on each other and fused together to create one big weld. One big weld. And it's done with multiple layers of weld beads laid up and fused next to weld beads. This is one technique for welding. The other technique is weave beads. So this is different because this is one solid weld and we take that puddle and we make it go back and forth and back and forth across there. I'm going to show you a little bit on the board the advantages or disadvantages, but know this. Competent welds can be made either way. Sometimes it's even left to the welder on a welding procedure sheet. They say, do I do stringers or do I do weaves? And the pr procedure sheet will say, it's up to the welder, welder's discretion. Sometimes they will say on particular joints or particular thicknesses of metal, you have to use stringer beads on these. Sometimes they'll say you can use weaves. The weaves are used in the piping industry a lot. The point is you're going to learn both in here. The stringers are a little bit easier to learn. They take a little bit longer to fill the weld up. So what I want to focus on in this video is the weave because that's what gives people the most trouble. So if we come over here and look, I'm going to give you some of my artistic ability, which trust me isn't much. And I'm going to draw that joint right there, okay? So we're just going to look at it like this. And there's the middle. Now in order to make a big weld, we can't just come in and make one great big huge weld. It won't fuse. So generally what we do is we come in with our 6010 and we run the root pass. There's the root kind of sloppy, but that's okay, it's the root. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over this with our 7018 or your MIG welder or your flux core. We do weaves and stringers in all welding processes, including TIG. Works the same way. The technique used to weld, this is our weld puddle, okay? We bring the weld across, we pause. We move up, we pause. We bring it across, we pause. What you're doing is pulling the heat out of the pool, bringing it over to the side, and you're pausing to let it build up. The mantra that you need to learn and put under your pillow and sleep with, if you're going to learn beads, is this. Move across the middle and hold on the sides. So when we do these welds, we're not doing a rocking chair motion. We're not going across and back and forth. What we need to do is we go boom across the middle and pause. Because what will happen if you don't move across the middle, looking at this drawing from the end, and we have a joint that looks like this, this weld will start looking like this. So you have a great big weld in there, but that's really the only part of the weld that's doing anything. We want these welds to be in here nice and flat. Maybe a little bit convex, but we want these welds to be in here flat. Every one of you that does a weave bead will get welds that look like this. And you'll come ask your instructors and they'll say, Move across the middle, hold on the sides. And you'll say, I'm doing that. Well, you're not doing it enough. There's only one technique to get these welds flat with a weave, and that is move across the middle and hold on the sides. Basically what you're doing is taking that molten puddle and you're stretching it out and letting it build up. Stretching it out and letting it build up. It's kind of like an inchworm. Stretching it out and letting it fill. Stretching it out and letting it fill. When we pause on the sides, that allows this weld to fill up. 
if we don't pause on the sides, then we get two things. We get the weld bead that's humped up in the middle, but we also get a bigger problem, and that is undercut on the edges of the weld. An undercut is a serious discontinuity in the weld and can turn easily into a defect to make the weld rejectable. So when you're doing these weaves, focus on holding on the sides and moving across the middle. Now one other thing that I tell students is we want these welds to be nice and tight. So if I blow this up, we're going to put the magnification lens on here. Now here's my puddle. I move across, I pause. I move across and I pause. And I move across and I pause. If I go up too far, too fast, what I get is a straight line of weld, but you see these spots right here? Those spots are potential problem spots. So we can't have that spread out too far. We need to keep that weave nice and tight. The difference being, we come across, we come across, we pause, cross the middle and pause. Now if I keep this weld tight, look at what the edges of that weld look like. There is a major difference between that and that. So as you get going on your stringer beads and your weave beads, just remember, great welds with good integrity can be done either way. Sometimes they will specify whether you do it one way or the other, and sometimes they say whatever you prefer. The weave beads are a little bit trickier than the stringers because you're carrying a bigger puddle. It's a lot hotter. So the mantra is move across the middle and hold on the sides. If it's building up in the middle, you're not moving fast enough. You need to move faster across the middle and hold on the sides. There are no other tricks. There are no other techniques to weave beads. Move across the middle and hold on the side. Keep the pattern tight. Practice them a lot. Talk with your instructors and have them show you their technique. But I promise you it's going to be the same as what we just explained. So get in your booth and start running some weaves.